Oh no! What are you doing? Oh, whoa! Well, <laughs> How Alert. is everybody's? <laughs> <laughs> You're already messing with soundboard. I love it. I can't help it. I really can't. I'm a giant child. It's fine. But that's why we're here. And that's why the one person who's watching us is here as well. Hello, Keys. Um... <laughs> <laughs> she, can't, she couldn't get enough of us just a second ago, so she's like, watch it live now. I mean, she also has to work with us. Yeah. And yes. then, like, sleep next to you. And then listen to my BS. Hey. And then. Um, so, oh, and you know what? Before I get a text message. Uh -huh. Sound is off. <laughs> oh, yeah. One day. Yeah. Me, me too. One day we will get this. I will get this figured out someday. Jeff. Yeah. I'm not looking at a white wall, bud. Yeah, I actually exist in a space that is not just a white wall. I see you um, got headphones. Yeah, I, I, I'm getting set up. Stay, I mean, I had books, everything. So proud of you. Um, so I've had this room like this the whole time. The only thing I didn't have is a table. And I really wanted to set it up in here. And then I was like, oh, I don't have a table. And I'm not going to just hold a laptop on my lap while talking to everybody. And I was I like, let you borrow a table. <laughs> um, I, I bought one the other day and put it together. It did. It, I'm, I love it. It doesn't take up much space. That's the biggest thing for me. Well, <laughs> I dropped the dough on it. I dropped even yes. more dough because I'm getting a new couch tomorrow. So you're getting a couch. Yeah. That's cool. I mean, did you already have a couch? It's a, it was a cheap, uh, well, free couch that wasn't the most comfortable thing. And I was like, nope, I want an actually legit comfy couch that reclines and has a middle con has a middle hidden drawer in it. So I could put yeah. my remotes and snackies whenever I'm feeling hungry in them. Listen, Jamie doesn't understand. I base my couch choices on if they have cubbies and cup holders. It didn't have cup holders. The love seat that was part of the set for it did. And yeah. I've always been one of those, like, while I might have a drink at my couch, I usually don't like to have a, um, I usually don't like to have cup holders because having two nephews, I've seen them totally take a couch, a nice new couch. Yeah. And Hey, here's this thing that goes into a cup holder and I'll still figure out a way to make a mess onto a new couch. And I feel like that's of, also Jacob. And, and in a lot of ways, I'm just a big kid, and I'm not the most graceful, and I don't want to be putting up with the Fucking embarrassing! <laughs> oh, it's the puppers! Apparently, my door's open, so... Okay. And he slides back in. Cool guy. Just like um, throwing everything everywhere. It's fine. So, so a, a, a as the book suggested, happy Star Wars Day to everybody. Though May the are, fourth be with you. Uh, he said the cliche. I did. We're. I feel like I'm going to be saying a certain cliche today based on what our main discussion topic will be like, as you can see on our banner, with movies based on books. Yep. I just need to get my life together today. Uh, it happens. It, everything's fine. Like, my headset is, like, sitting weird on my glasses today. Like. I actually have a headset. <laughs> You're all put together, and my life yeah. is just falling apart. It's fine. I, I think I was stealing from. I, I, su I sucked the good things from yours and <laughs> absorbed look, it. Look, my... look, all I did was move my headset. Yeah. Not good. Not good. Don't don't fight against it. You know what? Contacts from now on. Um, they help me. I like them. Yep. Okay. So yes, we are talking about books and movies today. Yeah. Uh, on behalf of Mercedes, I'm just gonna say that this show is dedicated to what? <laughs> I'm done. Uh, <laughs> this this show is dedicated to Mercedes because she's always like, I like books. I don't really yeah. like movies. Yeah, Mi Michaela was the one who came to me and was like, 
hey, have you guys? Because I told I was telling her about the show, right, and she's right. like, have you done a, have you done an episode about books being made into movies? And I'm like, no, no, not yet. We'll get to there. And right, right, right off the bat, I knew why. I knew why she was like, hey, have you done books that have made into movies? Because her favorite book, her favorite book is also her favorite movie. And so, of course, she has to have both of them. Uh, Lord of the Rings. She is all about it. It's now being turned into a TV series. They've been talking about that for a while, too. Yeah, um, I remember it had to have been 2017 or 2018. Yeah. Whenever I first heard, oh, yeah, Amazon just bought the rights to Lord of the Rings in order to make it into a series. Yeah. And at that time, I was like, what part of Lord of the Rings are they going to be basing this off of? And, and I mean, now that I'm I've seen it, find out. Now, now, now that I've seen the trailer, we know they're basing it on. I haven't the seen year. the trailer yet. The, it, it's essentially going to be based on the time that, um, at least from my understanding of it, of the years where um, the ring has first been forged, and gotcha. also, and so all of the all of the different races having their rings and how they grow to power and use those in that way before being bound up by the one ring. Right, right. Okay, I think actually I did see that, and maybe I just blocked it out. So you, I mean, you, you don't know why? It's because the dwarven girl didn't have a beard, and it threw you off. And you're like, wait, dwarf girls are supposed to have beards. This isn't Lord of the Rings, then. They lied to me. They lied to me the whole time. Like, what was that? Oh, my God, stop playing. It's the longest cricket. Oh he was God. that annoyed with it. That's he was how like, he Max, how it. dare you? <laughs> um, <laughs> what, there was something that I watched where it had dwarves in it, and they were making fun. There was a dwarven girl making fun of dwarven women not having beards, and I just can't remember the movie right now. Hmm. I suck today. I really do. We have those days. It happens. It happens. It's okay uh, because it's a Wednesday. Right. And uh, my, book. my anniversary with my wife is tomorrow. Well, happy Cinco de Mayo and anniversary to you. Yeah. So the funny story about that real quick before we dive into the meat and potatoes. <laughs> potatoes uh, because of Lord of the potatoes. Rings. Anyway, um, is we actually did nothing Cinco de Mayo-ish. On our first date, nothing. We literally sat on a porch outside my friend's house and we painted all day. And then we watched 16. K no, we did not. We watched Breakfast Club. That's what we watched. Yeah. And that's how she got her <laughs> nickname, The Princess. Hi, babe. And that it sounds pretty much like American Cinco de Mayo to me. Sure. I mean, yeah. I would have taken tacos and tequila, but sure. Why not? Sure, that's fine. Sure. Yeah. Um, so, and then when a uh, few years later, four years later, to be exactly honest, uh, I was like, well, we can get married on our anniversary so I don't have to remember so many dates because that would be nice. And right. she said, okay. And I was like, yes, Revenge of the Fifth. And she said, was that a Star Wars joke? And I said, maybe. And she said, no. Mm. So we got married on the 11th. Um, <laughs> okay, so that's what happened just to throw a little Star Wars in there, yeah, yeah, okay. Books and movies, Lord no, of the no, Rings, I, The I, Hobbit. I, just, I, I can't believe that you 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 lost it because of you made a Star Wars reference, and she's like, No, nope, have you met my that. wife? Have you I met have my wife? I have, but you could make a Star yeah. Wars reference out of anything. I'm sure May 11th has something. Shh. <laughs> she will divorce me and remarry me on a different day just because of that right so let's not um <laughs> geez. uh so <laughs> lord of the rings the hobbit great movies uh in yeah. my my um, my opinion they are one of them that i actually feel like is a fairly decent interpretation of the book. You're never going to be able to pack at least that much of book. It, you know, three movies. That's true. That's true. E even with three movies, you're, you're, you're stretching yourself thin out for what was based on three books. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look at other franchises that have tried to do that. 
where it was four books and it ended up being five or six movies, which right. I'm sure we'll we'll talk about here we'll, shortly. We'll, we'll um, talk about that a bit. Well, I mean, it, it they they did the complete opposite with the other. They took The Hobbit, literally one book, and made three movies out of it, which I think they should have done anyway. Um, no, I agree. It's the right move because there's so much you know meat and potatoes that are in The Hobbit that you can make. There's three. a lot of potatoes in The Hobbit. Yeah, all the potatoes. Definitely. Um, let I mean let's let's just go through our uh, handy dandy Reddit list. Oh, okay. Because you know I always have to come prepared with that, yeah, either that I, or BuzzFeed. I, I came with my handy dandy books that are actually TV shows and movies. So this is where Jeff and I differ, <laughs> and other books that were made into TV shows or movies. Oh, that's so great. Anyway, um, this is where oh. Jeff and I. I differ because and Jeff books are like, to TV shows and I'm going to stab him. Is there a stab? <laughs> Is there a, here? Oh no. Oh no. Do it again. Here. This is for you. Slow clap. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh. And then books that should have never been made into movies. You are skipping so far ahead all at once. No, I'm not skipping just, ahead. Like, throwing I'm just saying. Everyone. I'm just saying. It, they, they all exist. They all exist. All there. But yes. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm looking let, at let, Let's 40, go at your, at your Reddit list of, of, of lists. 40 of our all-time favorite, oh, sorry, favorite uh -huh. book to movie adaptations. Uh, I think we should scroll through this. We don't have to get too far into yeah, each one just say yes or no yep and we can go from there and then we can talk about things like this okay yeah. so uh number one to kill a mockingbird 1962 so it's a harper lee classic of course which harper lee you, how can you go wrong right right have you read to kill a mockingbird uh was forced to read it in middle school as well as watch the movie I absolutely loved it. You did not have to force me to read that book. It was, at the time, not my taste in books, but upon later reflection as I've gotten older, I've grown to really appreciate it, both book and movie. Okay, so I think they're both great. So that's a win. Is there a win? <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll find a win. A ding, ding, ding. Right? I mean, we're, I'll have to work on this. Anyway, yeah, you, you next one. Like, yeah. You have enough soundboard stuff. We'll figure it out. We will. We will. We'll get there. Look at us like getting up in it. Anyway, yeah, um, sure. this one surprised me because a lot of people didn't know that this was actually a book to movie adaptation. Uh, the Godfather. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, Mario I, Puzo. Yeah. Yeah. Which I have read through the book one time. Yeah. It, it was one but of that's those. An, it was one of those, hey, watch the movie. You know this is based on a book? Nope, now I do. And it's yep. a pretty solid read. Yeah, uh, and they did the same thing where they took one novel and actually made it into two books or two movies. Right. So, but the I think the great thing about this is they actually took the time to get everything right because those two movies were two years apart. So that was 1972 and 1974. So they gave it enough time to breathe. Yeah, for, for for those who learned that hey, it was part of the book, they then can read the book and say, hey, yeah, this was done right. This could have been done better, and kind of made their own opinion. I think both are fantastic. I do too. Okay, uh, <laughs> one I really don't have a, a lot of experience um, with when it comes to this. Little Women read the book. I want to think in my early twenties um, and I've seen the mo various versions of the movie. I don't think the big, like big movie to, or book to movie adaptation came out to like 2018, 19, one of those. They, they've had, they had some like small versions of it. Yeah. In like the late, I believe the mid eighties, early nineties kind of had those not necessarily made for TV movie versions of them, but, but made for TV. What, but, but it's kind of what it felt like a direct, almost like the direct to VHS. Yeah. Um, the next one, I know we're going through this pretty fast because these are just kind of one-offs, a lot older books right. with semi older movies. And then we can get into like, again, 
Favorites and not favorites. Yeah. Anyway, so the color purple loved both of them. Both I have movie and book. I have not read the color purple. Really? Yeah, it's I've I, I've never read it, but I do enjoy the movie. I mean, you, you really I mean one Spielberg. OK, right, right. I mean, 1985, it's not big explosions or anything like that. But I think they if you were to read the book and watch the movie, there would be very little differences or things that you would miss. OK, OK. And that, that's what you want out of a book to movie adaptation. Right. Um, the Wizard of Oz. Um, I've read most of the Wizard of Oz books, like even like, you know, the side story ones and things like, like that. Wicked. Well, no, no, no. Like the other stuff by uh, Balm. Okay. Um, and they've done a few of the version. They've made a few of those into the movies, like the Return to Wizard of Oz, which yep. is a super weird movie. But they changed so much of the symbolism from what the book was trying to mean and yes. what the movie was trying to mean that some of it gets lost in interpretation. That isn't yep. to take away from the movie or praise the book over movie, but. It's just a different taste. I like the original Wizard of Oz better than any of the other adaptations. I know we're throwing that word around a lot. Right. Um, well, like you but said, the like original w- Judy Garland. Like Wicked. Like... I mean, I like Wick- Wicked, but it's... I've read Wicked before I ever saw the play or like the right. um, the other things that they have done with it. Um, something like that I just find better as a book. Okay. Uh, but like, uh, the return to Oz Wiz, um, what, the great and powerful Oz. I know we talked about those all like last week. Yeah. Um, I just, I like the, the original wizard of Oz. Above yeah. All of them. Yeah. I, I, I agree with you on that. Um, probably people have not really, uh, seen that one so we're gonna skip that one well, you uh force shoot it out, shoot it out there for a sure second. the remains of the day i can't say i know anything on either yeah i i know i have not read the book i know that i've seen parts of it because of an actor that's in it and i can't even name the actor right now that's like how yeah, so, 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 so so sorry for anybody who's watching this who remains of the day might be your favorite book or movie if you have watched it or or read it, let us know. Yeah, talk and about maybe it. Maybe we'll check it out. Yeah, for sure. Um, Forrest Gump. Love the movie. Absolutely love the movie. The that's bo- like the book starts to get super far fetched. Yeah, that's true. Oh my god, I'm so sorry, guys. Yeah, I I agree. But you can't. You just can't beat Tom Hanks. No. I think that was a lot better than the actual book. Yeah. I, I, uh, I the book the book took it to where like it's kind of a oh that's a little bit out there but not unbelievable there's right. parts of the book that just you're like i get that this is a book and it's a fictionalization of a person but eh, too much too much right uh one of my all-time favorite books and movies the princess bride yeah Solid there, movie, good book. There are key differences between both. Right. But I think I I could read that book or watch that movie a hundred times. I absolutely love them both. Plus, Indigo Montoya is my favorite character. <laughs> you can my tough father. No, prepare to die. Prepare to die. <laughs> oh, uh, so 2016 Hidden Figures. I um, really liked that movie. Yep. I, I yep. didn't even know that that one was a book. I never read the book on that one. Really? I really did, did the book go by a different name? No. Okay, because I wasn't sure if it was one of those, like, precious kind of things. No. So Hidden Figures uh, was one of those books that I was, I think it was either middle school or high school they had us read. Um, now, I also spent some of my, my formative years in Florida literally 20 minutes from Kennedy Space Center. That makes sense. That very much makes sense on why they were having you read something like that book because it's something that's very easily relatable to you where you're at. Yep, especially in science class. They're like, read this. I'm like, but it's not English. And they're like, so? And I'm like, all right. Right. Uh, Really good. Schindler's List. 
Oh, solid, solid movie. I enjoyed hey, uh, the book. Keys, which um, one did you have no idea? I think that was Forrest Gump. But oh yeah, would have to a lot of people know. don't know. Yeah, let I, I think that's right. But yeah, let us know which one that that was that you weren't sure that was a book. Okay, um, Schindler's List, great book, great movie. So there there are a lot that are actual yeah, that are solid. great book and great movie because the second half of this show is going to be a shit show. Um, <laughs> we're gonna skip this one because we will talk about it on the second half. Great Expectation, Charles Dickens. I cannot stand anything by Dickens. What? I I I have okay. Here's the weird thing. I say this having read so much Charles Dickens growing up and through high school, but mm -hmm. I cannot stand Dixon literature. Oh. I'm not a I'm not a fan. Okay, so not even Great Expectations. No, Great Expectations, Oliver Twist. No, just none of it. Okay. Even, even a Christmas Carol. No. Uh, so a Christmas Carol for me, uh, cause that's another, you know, book made into a movie. Right. Um, several, several movies. I'm not a fan of, um, repetitory nature. Mm. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, yes. so just like how everyone hated me for not liking a nightmare before Christmas. I am not going to like anything that you throw in my face over and over and over again. It's just not going to happen. Yep. Um, so... And I feel like, here's the thing. That's kind of my feeling towards Charles Dickens' books. Yeah. It is this whole, the same thing about just the same thing again and again and again and again. Okay. Okay. I can see that. All right. Well, uh, how about, have you ever read The Devil Wears Prada? I have not read The Devil Wears Prada. I knew it was a book, but I have not read it. I had no idea before the movie came out in 2006 that it was a book before it was a movie. Okay, no idea. Okay. So, so was it one of those, like, you saw it on the bookshelf when the movie was coming out, so you knew at that point? Yep. Like, that's kind of how I knew about it, because, like, I would see it like you'd walk in Walmart and they'd have it like in their little books area of Devil Wears Prada. And I'm like, oh, I bet they're promoting that because of the movie. And I so thought I knew, that they I came out with it because book, of the movie. I knew that it was a book made into a movie. I had no idea. However, I love that movie. It's a good movie. It's a fun one. So if anyone has actually read the book compared to the movie, I would love to know the differences. To have a comparison. I would love it. Yeah, yeah love it. Um, we've already talked about the Lord of the Rings, mm -hmm. Mr. Tolkien. Uh, anything Stephen King? Yeah. I would love to see your impression on this. I love, okay, I'm I'm going to say this and it's going to sound weird. Even the ones that are maximum overdrive, which most people just completely are like, oh, that's a terrible movie. <laughs> I love Here's your loins. all <laughs> of Stephen King's books turned into movies. I watch them repeatedly. I love them. I mean, misery, misery, sleepwalker, yeah. uh, nightwalkers, Salem's lot. You said that the new one, um, no, sleepwalkers. It, not, is that this? Not maybe, no, maybe it's night stalkers. I think I misspoke on that one. Tommy knockers. Yeah. Love Tommy knockers. Um, Shawshank I mean, redemption. We, 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 we just, we discussed it. Yep. Uh, Cujo. Love Cujo. I love right. Cujo. It makes hey, me I sad. Read, but... Here's the thing. I read the book Cujo before the movie, before watching it. It was one of my very first like Stephen King books that I ever read. And I was just like, I yeah, all of his stuff that he makes, I want to now watch. Um, I was such a big fan of reading Stephen King as a child that uh, even his short stories that he came out with, mm -hmm. there was like a certain volumes that he came out with i got them all and read them all repeatedly i think uh heather wants to know which version of it as in it oh clown. Which, um, i always prefer the original version uh i have a lot of hate for both of them um because of your whole clown thing well yeah mostly the hate because of the clown thing but also uh i like that they for the most part kept to the original story of both the books 
and mm-hmm. the movies. Mm-hmm. Um, I hate what they did to Pennywise, to be honest with you. Just over um, overworked him. Well, he scares the shit out of me. Yeah. I'm I'm not gonna lie, and my lovely wife is correct. I don't think you can get a better Pennywise than Tim Curry. Than Tim Curry, no. He's such he he fits such a great role. I mean, he's, he's Tim good. Curry, right? Um, Heather agrees. Yep. Um. So yeah. Well, okay. Did on there? Did they just list it as the whole thing as all Stephen King books to movies, or did they list a specific grouping? No, like they they did Shawshank Redemption, and I just went on my my thing with it because yeah. Stephen King. Right. He deserves the whole thing. Right. She's talking about, yeah. It. Yep. <laughs> if you want a movie that terrifies you of clowns, killer clowns from outer space. Let's not. Uh, there was a movie. <laughs> there was a movie that Jamie made me watch once. It was called Amusement. And if okay. you've ever seen Amusement, um, the, the cover of it is this guy in like a clown mask just standing there. And it's called Amusement, so you think circus. However, that movie has nothing to do with a clown and nothing to do with the circus. So I was like, ha ha. That's a double miss. Yep. She thought she was going to get me, and then she yep. was like, okay, killer clowns yep. from outer space. I said, yep, yep, yep. No, thank you. Um, the the people at work, like my my boss and and Stephanie, <laughs> the, um, yeah, that's besides the point, uh, are always joking that they're going to break into my office and yeah, put a clown under my desk. Yeah. Or one of those, little do that, they that, know that that's clown that does it. Yeah, yeah. That little do they know that's the day that the hotel burns down. Um, <laughs> also, so I'm also afraid of spiders. I just want a little side note here. Yeah, um, I I don't like spiders. I'm not a big fan of spiders. Uh, I'm standing out back after doing my trash run today, and one of our breakfast ladies was like, "Max," and I was like, "What?" And she goes, "Look at that." And I like turn around, I'm looking and I'm like, I don't, I don't see anything. She was like on the wall and there was a spider and I shit you not. He was this big. Oh, nice. Like the, yeah, like he, he was huge. It was like a wolf spider and he's just like hanging out on the wall, trying to get out of the rain and all. Uh, I would actually watch arachnophobia. I'll get to that story in a minute. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that was a huge spider. So for uh, as far as arachnophobia goes, is I watched it when I was really little, and it did not phase me. It really did not phase me. Uh, but when I got into my twenties, I was like, "Oh, arachnophobia! Let me go ahead and watch that again." Nope. And it just I triggered every single part of your fear. Yeah, um, it's funny how things don't affect you when you're younger, and then when you get older, they do. Right. Um, right. Because like when you're young, it, you're young, you're just like, ha, ah, that's funny stuff, and then you get old, and you're like, oh, that that that's that's serious. That's kind of spooky. Yep, so for it, I watched it on VHS for the first time when I was younger. I was like nine. Mm-hmm. I think I was nine. And I loved it. I was just like, Haha, this is this is great. I love scary movies. Um, and then became p- petrified of clowns, I guess. Uh, but I remember when Jamie and I first moved to Kansas about five years ago, we were sitting in our first house out in Augusta, and it was the MTV Movie Awards that were on. And that okay. was the year that... I think it was coming out like the new one Mm -hmm. and they showed a preview of it and I I was doing something. I was looking down and I happened to look up as soon as like Pennywise popped up. Mm -hmm. I literally jumped 12 feet across our living room into the kitchen. And and if she's still watching, she can tell you like that literally happened. I jumped Mm -hmm. from a sitting position. All of a sudden I'm in the kitchen. (laughs) How the hell? I am deceptively fast for a fat man, okay? I am. Uh, I am. And you know it's true. You yeah. Know, you know it. You know it's true. I know. <laughs> All right, moving along. Uh, Goodfellas. Okay. I did not know it was a book. <coughs> I can't say that I knew that it was a book. Um, and as far as movie... I prefer a lot of other gangster movies over it, mafia based movies. Right. But it's still an okay watch now and then. Gotcha. Uh Fight Club. I was actually gonna show that instead of the book that fell behind as the hey, 
books that I love as movies because um, Chuck Palahniuk is my second favorite writer of all time. And I yeah. have all of his works up there um, outside of Fight Club, which Rob currently has. Well, we, um, we can't talk about it. No, no. That, that's why I was talking about the other ones. <laughs> because because besides the one that we do not talk of, he has Choke, which is the book that I was going to show as my movies that I actually enjoy from authors of my favorite. Yeah. Um, um, I like all of his books. I wish more of them would be made into movies. A couple of them haven't been due to controversy with actual things that have happened. Uh, whenever he did Survivor, it got picked up as one and then 9-11 happened and so you couldn't do a hijack a plane hijacking movie no um and then another one came out um invisible monsters which deals a lot with the trans community and a different view at, at that but whenever it first got bought up the that was still one of those it didn't have the kind of backing that it does now right and support that the trans community has now and I think if they released a movie like that now, it would actually more, even though it gives an, it opens the eyes to kind of that side of it and looking at some interesting things with it. Um, I don't think that either one, it would play well as a movie. I think it might work good as a mini series, like a six episode mini series, or two, it just would rub people the wrong way based on who got cast. So if anyone from like, you know, a movie studio is watching, um, Jeff and I want to be a part of this mini series. <laughs> Pick yeah, it up. It was no, our I, idea. I, from I, someone I, else's I, book, but it was our idea. <laughs> yeah, I would love to be part of anything that has Paul and Eek's name attached to it. He's an amazing writer. I agree. I um, agree. And and yes, Fight Club. Um, I will do I will use the cliche right now. Book better than movie, but it is one yeah. of my favorite movies. It is, um, a movie, is it a, it's a movie that I really actually enjoy because it has two of my favorite actors, plays a lot into it. Okay. I'm, I'm a huge fan of Edward Norton. We've discussed this many a time. Yes. And I like Brad Pitt before he started to catch all of the, he's in everything. Before he became Brad Pitt. Right. Like, I love that in Euro Trip, he has a part in it and he doesn't even get credited. Like, that's the point where he's like, that I, makes I, me like like him a little better. Right. Like early Brad Pitt was like, I just want to be in movies. They they can be super offhand. They can be like this. They can be like that. Right. I just want to have fun with it before he's now in these more serious roles. So, you know, you could more than likely you couldn't convince Brad Pitt to be in um Fight Club nowadays. He would he would no. Have him have him look that eccentric, have him dress up like he does in Fight Club, be that kind of character. Well, you that, also have to look unhinged. at the year that that came out with. Like, that was, like, that was 1999, so that was the style. I mean, if you if you remember correctly, right after that is where he went in his normal day life looking all weird right. and stuff. So... Right. But that's the thing, is you couldn't convince him to, like... Because here's the thing, they do have a Fight Club 2. Yeah. It's a graphic novel. He decided to make it in, I think, a series of 12 comic books and then released it as a graphic novel. Fun graphic novel. But the more I read the graphic novel, the more I was like, yeah, they couldn't make this into a movie. It wouldn't work. Right. If it's well as a graphic novel, it wouldn't win as a movie. Um, I enjoy the movie. I, I don't know if I could say that the book was better to the, than the movie for me for Fight Club. Um. I just feel like you have a I'll better have of that. It, it it gives you a better surprise whenever you find out that he's just schizophrenic. Yeah, but see, I'm the Be, well, because I'm of such how, a fan of the cinematic reveal. Right. That well that like I'm saying like in the, the in, the, in the literary in the literary reveal, why I feel like it's better done than in the cinematic, at least for you know, Tyler Durden is the same guy. It's this whole thing where in the movie you get bits and pieces of Tyler and who he is. In the right. book, they make this whole big thing about him. And whenever you finally realize, oh, it's the same guy, 
he's just him going through a sleep phase, it like way opens up the whole like you go back and you start flipping back two chapters and you start rereading this and you're like, man, that's a crazy conversation that just happened. I mean, I feel like I got that. In the, I mean, I'm just, I'm such a fan, like I said, cinematic reveal. Right, um, right. To actually see it unfold in your eyes. Like, I am a big shock person where I'm mm -hmm. like, no way! Because right. there's not a lot of movies or TV shows or anything like that that actually shock me. Like, usually I'm the one watching the movie going, there's I bet that's that that's this. Yep, yep. Yep. Um, moving on, we can get back to that. Yep. But moving on, so here's one uh mash the tv series about the korean war yep okay i did not know that they i knew that they had that as a movie that yep. they then took and made that into the tv show but i did not know that it was based on a book it's not then they came out it? with they came out with the book after the movie and the tv series okay so they created a so so is this one of those kind of um firefly i guess situations where if you know about that yeah where, um where, when firefly didn't have its full ending before serenity they no, released, i don't they think released, it was like, that they released like five volumes to close out the thing no it wasn't a close out it was more of a hey this is really popular right now in the 1970s let's make we it can, even more popular it, okay. with a different yeah okay yeah, which, I mean, there are a lot of movies that have done that, and I'm just like, no. Yeah, yeah. No. Um, the Social Network. It's based on the book, The Accidental Billionaires. Okay. Uh, which is not a super old book, obviously, because it's, no, about because it's about Facebook. Social media, of course. But they wrote the book. They went, huh, this would be kind of a, a, cool, a cool movie, and they did that. Um, not a fan of either one. I can't to say be I'm, honest I'm, with you. I can't say I'm a. I've never read the book, so I can't say if I'm a fan or not. And the movie, it, I didn't care much for it to be honest. I think that the book would be better than the movie. Um, but I don't. I'm just not a fan of either one. I yeah. love the main actor in it. Um, I think he's great. I'll watch just about anything that he does. But yeah. and it has Justin Timberlake in it. And I actually like him in an acting role. I like him as an actor. Like, my wife is obsessed with Justin Timberlake to the point where she will talk about him and be like, yeah, you know, Justin, blah, 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 blah. Like, well, like, like it's, it's her friend from next door. Right. Yeah. Right. You're like, we're you're driving like, hey, through Memphis. Right, right. We're, we're going to go say hi to Justin. Yeah, we're driving through no. Memphis on our way back to Florida to visit our families. And she was like, you know, Justin's from Memphis. I was like, who the fuck is Justin? Right, right. Who's this dude? We're talking about? Yeah, who who is this dude that you know that he's from here? And she was like, "Babe, Justin Timberlake." And I was like, "Stop talking about him like you know him. Stop it." <laughs> like he told you that he was from Memphis and he showed get me all mad and off. jealous and crap. <laughs> <laughs> and there's that little tidbit for today. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm sure I'm sure that there's many women who call him the same thing. I mean, I, I uh, is there many lesbian women that call him the same thing? Probably today? not. Maybe. Maybe. He does kind of go for everybody, I guess. In, in her heart where's, of hearts, she knows him. Where is that thing? Hold on. I have the perfect. Uh, here we go. <laughs> Sad pandas. Okay. All yeah, right. We're, we're going to move on. I'm not that. putting that comment. Yeah, I'm not putting that comment on the show. Um, so, um, we so just after social PG network, <laughs> after social network, <laughs> the exorcist. <laughs> I actually enjoy that book. I do too. I do too. Yep. Um, the movie scared the heck out of me. Yeah. I, I think uh, it's because the first time I watched it, I was like 12. So that was 19. Uh, Exorcist came out in 1973, I, I want to so. say. Um, so obviously I wasn't born yet, but uh, I probably watched it for the first time. Early 90s. 
Okay. I mean, I've I've been a horror movie fan since I since I can even remember watching TV. <laughs> yeah. Um did not know it was a book, obviously, in, in the early 90s when I was like right, five. Right, right. Um, I, yeah, whenever I read it when I was 12, I didn't know that it was a movie because I wasn't going out looking for exorcist books. Yeah, I mean, uh, I probably came out of the womb looking for exorcist books, but that's besides <laughs> the point. That's uh, a different thing. <laughs> right. Like, like Heather says, birth. Um, she knows. She knows. Um I will have to say I love the book and the movie for different reasons. Yeah, because they're both great to me. So, uh, and this is one of those uh, situations where the, the novel actually did not come out before the movie. So what they did was it was like an anniversary celebrating like so many years of The Exorcist being out since 19, 1973. Okay. Um. And then they they made this book. Uh, so it's by William Blady. Um, and he he does a lot of these like supernatural like kind of event books. Okay. Uh, so he, he threw his own adaptation into it. What a lot of people don't understand, though, is this holds a special place in my heart because The Exorcist was actually based on a true story. Mm hmm which we will get into another episode of movies based on true stories. Yeah. Um, so we're not going to go too far into that today, but yeah. just know that it's coming because I love it and Jeff's going to love it too. I do love movies based on true stories. Yep. Um, so a Michael Douglas film uh, that was very, very weird, Wonder Boys. I can't say I've ever watched it. I've never read the book. Um, I remember because I, I went through a Michael Douglas fan, uh, like a little phase. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I can actually speak on it well enough to, to, to determine like what would I think would be better or why the movie's even great to begin with. Okay. Um, but it's it, it's one that we should check out and do a review on. Okay. I'd be down. Yeah. Um, what is another one? One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, both great to me. Yeah, yeah, so, solid book, great cinematically. Yep. Um, Psycho. Yeah, good. Another one of those that the movie did so well in 1960, they made a book about it. Book about it, right. Um, Silence of the Lambs. Whew. I've actually read the Manhunter series. That's a good series. It is so good. Mm -hmm. Loved it so much. And so whenever they made Silence of the Lambs, knowing that it's from that, I yep. just was all about both of them. Just so he good. says she loves that movie. Silence of the Lambs. Just all, all the, the whole franchise for that one. Yep. It's just bang after bang after bang after bang. And I like that they base them off of the books really close to it. Yeah. Red uh, Dragon another is a great example of it. Yes. Another one, Crazy Rich Asians. Have you ever seen that movie or read the book? I haven't read the book. Knew that the movie that they made was based off of the book, but really couldn't get into the movie either. Uh, I love the movie for one simple fact. Aquafina. And that's I was going to be like, I almost watched it for the simple fact of, I absolutely love Aquafina. I love her. I absolutely, could like, Aquafina, if by some odd reason you end, end up watching this, because whenever we get to posted to the YouTube um, and somebody please, shares it to, to it, let us know. Please, let us know. Please be my friend. Please just be my friend. <laughs> um, so breakfast at Tiffany's. I'm not a fan of the movie. No, no. It's one of those. I know it's an old cinema classic, but it just doesn't do it for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I am a huge fan of Capote. Okay. Um, to the point where the movie Capote came out, uh, and which I actually like that movie. A lot of people gave that movie so much shit. Right. Um, I love right. it. That's the thing is it got, it got like, oh, they didn't present him right. They didn't make him look in his best. 
is what? what the is what the critics made it sound out to be. And I'm like, no, this is exactly what I wanted from Capote. Also, um, the actor, the like, mm, I could I? not think his name is not of... coming to my ha- head. He's passed away a few years ago. Uh, Philip Seymour oh, Hoffman as Capote. Is that who did it? Maybe I'm mistaken. Hold on, we're going to make sure because you know that's what we do. We're fact checkers here. Make, make sure. Keep, keep us honest. Maybe somebody knows in the comments who played as Capote in the movie before we get to it. You are right. It actually is him. I was thinking of uh, uh, someone yes. very similar looking. But you are right, and he did pass away not that, rec- or not that long ago. Um, yeah. But I can't think of anyone else that could have could have done that role any better to be honest with you Just right me. right well, um, I, I, I like philip seymour hoffman so i was like i'm pretty sure that's who did it but i was like maybe i'm thinking of another movie that he did that was similar to it but you know it is no because i mean to be honest with you i was i was thinking of for, i was i'm picturing like the court scene mm-hmm. in my head mm-hmm. and in my head it was somebody different and i don't know why um, okay so I'm I'm having an off day. It's fine. It's okay. You'll, Just you'll be fine, bud. You'll be fine. Okay. <laughs> I did it twice. <laughs> you double walk Take the walk. soundboard away. <laughs> American Psycho. Uh, never read the book. Movie was. I, I okay. I, for me, here's the thing. I've heard about one of the most interesting things I've ever heard about American Psycho. Is if you watch it as a comedy, it's one That's of the best true. comedies ever made. You're right. If you watch Absolutely it as a right. horror drama, it's one of the stupidest movies ever made. I know, but it's it's so much Norman Bates esque. Yep. That I'm just like, okay, right. Um, Perks of being a wallflower. Great book. I have not seen the movie. Uh, yeah, um, same, same. I enjoyed the book. It was a quick read for me, mm-hmm. but I have never seen the movie. I mean, I try to stay away from anything Malkovich, to be honest with you, mm-hmm. ever since being John Malkovich. Gotcha. Just, nah. Um, so this is actually, I didn't know this. So I've heard of the movie, and I've heard of the book. Never tied them together, to be honest with you. So uh, the I'm going to name the book, and you're going to name the movie. Okay. Rum Punch. It's not Sideways. It, no, it's Jackie Brown. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Learn something new every day. I did not know that Rum Punch or that Jackie Brown was based on the book Rum Punch. No, no, didn't know. Did, didn't know. I had no idea. I learned something new every day. Interesting. So uh, that, that concludes that list. So now we can start talking about uh, what really the listeners that are here came to listen to instead of us rambling. Um <laughs> Twilight. Let's start there. Yeah. We can start there if we have to. All right, moving on. And <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just one of those I I tried to get through the first book. I really did. And it just it I couldn't do it. I made it through uh, the first movie and was like never again. Okay, so I always found myself in a relationship with somebody who loved the books and the movies every time a new movie came out. So I've literally seen every single one of the movies on opening day. Okay. Um, I don't know if anyone, yeah, you should be, (laughs) um, feel bad for me. Uh, I am actually a fan, not a fan. Um, you, you don't, you don't hate. I don't hate. Hold on. Hold on. I, I'm, I'm aware. I'm aware. So when I was uh, in my early 20s, 
Um, I read all of the books uh, just because I went through a huge reading phase and I'm like, okay, let's try this. I read every single book. I would have to say that I like the movies better than the book, and I'll tell you why. Okay. Especially the last one. I would read three pages of that last book and fall asleep. And I'd wake up about 20 minutes later, read three more pages, and fall asleep again. Was it just that dry? Um, yeah, there was just, it was a lot of bouncing back and forth. It was like, uh, it was a weird style for me of how it was written, considering I read the other books. Right. Um, I don't know. I don't know. No, I've seen the movies multiple times, because uh, I am a fan of Supernatural. Like, okay. movies, not... I'm right. a fan of the show of Supernatural, of the but show, that's not what I'm talking you about supernatural here. Supernatural movies as well. Right. So the actual plot behind it, I could get behind. Um, I despise Kristen Stewart. Thank you, Keys. Is, um, that, is that book four? No. Breaking Dawn is, is book okay. four. Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, see, I mean... I've read the books. I've watched the movies. I like watching the movies to an extent. Uh, Robert Pattinson, I think he fit well as Edward Cullen. I think it was absolutely asinine and just dumb that they sparkled. However, I do have to say from the first movie to the second movie, they did improve on that. So it looked less like glitter. Okay. Um, but the premise of the books in the movies... Uh, I can get behind. It is a supernatural love story in one. We all watch love stories. This is true. You can't tell me that we don't. Star Wars is a it's freaking a love, story. love story. It's an intergalactic love story. You can't tell me it's not. Also, let's talk about uh, the next one to get off Twilight. Let's uh -huh. let's talk about Harry Potter's. Okay. Those are it's the same I, damn story as Star Wars, which is still good. I like them both. I mean, I, I do like them both. Um, I mean, I prefer Star Wars over Harry Potter, <laughs> but um, I it doesn't mean I don't like Harry Potter. Yeah, when when I was growing up and Harry Potter's were starting to come out, the books obviously, right. uh, my grandmother would buy me the big hardcover books of harry potter every single time they came out um i like the books uh i i honestly think i like the movies better because i'm more of a visual person right right i get that um yep. i I've, I've kind of heard the opposite from people where it's they prefer the books and it's they prefer the books for the same reason where most people prefer Books of most things have been turned into the movie. It's all the small details that you can't pack into a book. I mean, into a movie that you can put into a book because they're not having to be as heavily edited. You're right. However, the what, what I look at is, is there anything missing from the story? Right. Like, not that, the book. That, that is detrimental. The story that, yeah, that actually right. affects how you, you perceive the actual reason. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I like them both. Like, I mean, uh, to the, to the extent that, you know, I've even watched the Fantastic Beast movies, right. uh, because of being a Harry Potter fan. I, I don't know. I, I'm still behind. I, I still need to watch all two and now the upcoming Fantastic Beast, but all the Harry it's Potter's already out. Okay. Then I need to watch all three Fantastic Beast movies. You just really need to borrow my voodoo login. I really do. There's, <laughs> like, so many, there's so many movies on your voodoo login that I'm like, oh, yeah, I need to watch that. And you're like, dude, I have like six, over 600 movies just on my voodoo alone. That's right. not including my movies right. anywhere. That's not including yeah. my iTunes. There's not including. Um, well, I, I, I say things like that. And then I look over. Yeah. And I'm like, oh yeah, I have about 40 different shows just between between my Disney Plus, my Hulu, and my Netflix that I say these are on my list of things to watch that I have yet to watch. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we are we are uh, closing in on time. So I I would like to. Uh, are, are we going to be a two? Yeah. So this is going to be a two parter, though. Is is what I'm going to say about okay. that. Okay. Um, 
And the other thing I just want to throw out there is uh, my favorite movies from book adaptations are going to be the Conjuring movies. Uh, I know nobody would think of that, but Ed and Lorraine Warren, the founders of Nespar, that the cases are actually, the movies are based on those cases. They wrote books before there were movies, and I highly suggest you check them out. Probably during Halloween we'll get more into those, though. Um, But let's do our surprise. Yeah. Totally do our surprise. You you want to announce it? Because you were the one who thought this up. And I was very much on your side for it. I'm so glad. And I even brought a trivia book because it plays into it. Ooh. All right. So so, so I'm going to read a little trivia thing here. Oh, let's see if we can get it. Go ahead. Okay, well, hold on. This is more just a fact thing. Okay. Can you name Barbie's four sisters? Stacy? Uh huh. Teresa? Hit and a miss. Uh, I'll, okay, so you had Stacy, which is the obvious one. Yeah. Um, Skipper. Was there one Skipper? Kel- Kelly. Kelly. Yep. Who the hell is Kelly? Chrissy. I remember. I remember Chrissy, and I remember Are Kelly Stacey. and Chrissy like the twins that no one talks about. I think so. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> so trivia. That's what it's all about. There's it's a new show. Trivia. Yeah. There's a new show on. Uh, oh my gosh, it's on, it's on Netflix. Yeah. Uh, um, sorry if you guys are hearing this. It's just a lot of thunder outside my door. My window. Yeah, it's it's getting pretty gross out. Yeah. Um, really lucky we didn't like lose power or anything. Um, but there's a new show on Netflix. It is called Bullshit. Legit is what it's called. It is hosted by Howie Mandel. Because uh, it's on Netflix and you can say stuff like that. Yes, and also Howie Mandel, man. Yeah, he's in everything these days. I like that guy. I like guy. that guy. Um, so we are going to do our own episode of the uh, Tom Fooleries of the Trivia Variety. Yeah. Because it's probably copyrighted. Um, so we'll, what we're we'll looking for... Type of it. Yes. Yeah. So what we are looking for is three people who want to participate in a trivia show for glorious prizes! Glorious prizes! Ooh. Besides just recognition... Besides just recognition on our show, there's prizes. There's prizes. Prizes. Who doesn't want to compete for the chance of a glorious bag of chips? Yeah, yeah. Who doesn't or want not one, but two candy bars? Ooh. Or uh, maybe just an popped bag of popcorn. Ah, we, we that was that. quick. Yeah, we got some possibilities. Two candy. He wants them two candy bars. He wants them two candy bars. He's in it to win it. Right. In it to win it. So, yes. Uh, so, next week, we are going to be doing our version of this yep. show. Um, so. Ooh. Oh. Uh. I might like you enough to throw in a bag of my voodoo chips. Whew. That's a big ask. But they're my favorite. They, they are amazing chips. I love voodoo chips so much. So much. Uh, <laughs> Jacob, them's fighting words. Them's fighting words. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, I'm guessing Keys is in. Jacob's in. So, we are looking for one more person. So, I will be the host of this lovely show because it's only right because Howie Mandel is bald, and so am I. Um, that, and if you've ever seen the show, which, if you haven't, go watch it on Netflix. I'm pretty sure it's on Netflix. I might be. <laughs> I, I would love it if it was on something like Paramount Plus, and you just keep on plugging Netflix for it. Right? No, it is on Netflix. It's 100% on Netflix. Okay. Okay, I just remembered, because I uh, wanted to know how I could f- apply to be on the show. Gotcha. 
Uh, it's on Netflix. Um, so the premise of the show is there are four contestants. One person is going to be in the hot seat. Three people are going to be the judge. The person in the hot seat is going to have to answer a series of random trivia questions that I am going to provide. Jeff is not going to know about them because Jeff is also going to be one of the contestants. Uh, but I will not be starting off in the hot seat. No, because that's unfair. Yeah, I believe in fairness. Fairness. Equality, if you will. Yeah. Anyway, so person in the hot seat answers trivia questions. Uh, at the end of each question, you will know if your answer is right or wrong. However, the three judges will not know if your answer is right or wrong. And it is your job in the hot seat to convince the three judges that you are not telling a lie. The three they judges will. Stuff. Yep. The three judges are then going to say, are they lying or are they correct? Depending on whatever they decide. All you have to do is talk one person into can, like believing that you're not full of shit. That's it. And you'll move on to the next question. However, if you do get the answer wrong and all three judges also say that you're lying, you're going to walk away with a hefty handshake. Oh, I have a soundboard. Ooh, that was nice thunder. Yeah, it's that pretty, was a nice it's, one. It's still going. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That yeah. was a long bowl. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, it looks like we just need one more person then. So sometime before next Wednesday, yeah. let us know if you would like to be a part of this. Um, I think that we are going to do monthly specials like this. Right, right. So if we can't get you on to this upcoming next week's one, whenever we do it next month, we at least have you in there to say, Hey, you want to be on this month's one? And we can get you in there. Also, each month could be a different game, or depending on how right. well we like playing bullshit, we might play it a whole bunch of times. Jeff and I love to play games. I am a board game addict. Yeah, and just right underneath his addict. books is all of his games. <laughs> yeah. I wish that was true. No, you have way too many games for that. Yeah, no, they're all in my closet in another room. But I might display a few out here behind me at some point. Ooh, that'd be fun. Yeah. Oh, Mercedes, Mercedes, how are you going to miss the entire episode about you? I'm just kidding. Hi. Hey. Hey. How what, you doing? Watch, it, what, what, watch it on the YouTubes. It's YouTubes. <laughs> She's going to be like, you're all full of shit. The Bucks were the best. <laughs> uh-huh. All those things that you said that the movies were good. Nope. Buck. Nope. Buck. I know you just got off work, but I wouldn't be a good friend if I didn't give you shit. True. Also, I am wearing my uh, Shorzy jersey today. Solid. Because in I, just... I'm celebrating. I'm celebrating Star Wars Day. Yeah, I don't actually own anything Star Wars besides, like, the movies. I have three shirts and all my collectible stuffs, but weirdly, I do not have any of the physical versions of the movies I just have it all on the streaming services. I have like the original three on VHS. I had the, here's the thing. I had the original three pre-97 edits. Was it 97 oh. or 93? Come, come, I want to think be it's 97. On, come be on the camera here. Along with all the dogs. My wife is celebrating. With yeah, baby yeah. she's doing it right. Doing it right. Doing it right. Doing it right. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> so, Even though she thinks she knows Justin Timberlake. <laughs> so so what are you celebrating the Shorzy's one for? Uh because in I think it's 12 days, the Shorzy uh series is released on Crave and then like 24 days from now I, it's I released believe, on Yeah, Hulu. I want to think it's May 27th. I thought it was 28th. It might be 28th. But then One again, of those. Like, oh, yeah, no, I want to think it's 27th because I'm pretty sure it's releasing on Hulu the same day that the Obi-Wan Kenobi uh, series is dropping on Disney+. Plus. See, everything goes back to Star Wars. And uh, to fit in with our topic for tonight, 
yeah. the mass amounts of not necessarily canon books that have been made about Star Wars. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's like 57 books. Right. And, and here's the thing not all of those are parts, some of those are considered canon, at least by yes. Lucas. Yes. Other parts are considered closer to fan fiction. But yes. still, the fact However, that they exist actual and have books. Printed, right. The fact actual that they have actually books. been published. But a publisher read that and said, yeah, we're making that a book. Not just a comic book, but like an actual novel. Right, a chapter book. That is crazy. Yeah. I love it, though. I absolutely love it. We should have planned better knowing that today was the fourth and did a we Star should've. Wars episode. But I, it's I, fine. I, I, I did not look ahead a week ahead on my schedule and say, oh, yeah, Wednesday's no. on a fourth and put those two together. Yeah, no, no, I didn't. I didn't. We fail. Today, mm. yeah, we fail. We fail. That's fine. But yeah, so uh, next week, bullshit. Um, week after that, some more random bullshit, just not the game. Uh, <laughs> Maybe finishing up the second part of the books one for... Yeah, there are just so many. Books like, that shouldn't be movies. So there's many a lot movies. of those. There's Yeah. The, mm, mm, mm. Like I said, right off the top of my head, boom. Jamie should will fight you had, on that one. Should never have been made a movie. Jamie will fight or, you on that one. Or if it was made into a movie, should not have been based on what they say it's based on in the book. I mean, that's true. That's true. It's like two different premises. Right. Yeah, I agree with you. 100%. And it's one of my favorite. It's one of my favorite new books. Told you. Told you. Mm hmm. <laughs> like, All here's, right. the thing. here's the thing. It's not that I don't like the movie. It's I don't like that the movie is said to be a comparison of the book. Are they coming out with another Ready Player One, or, if, or are they coming out with another Ernest Klein movie into a book, a book into a movie? No, they're coming out with like a Ready Player Two. Oh, uh, okay. Yep. Yep. Have we already done sequels, upcoming sequels? Have we done a show about upcoming sequels? Um, I don't believe we have done... Uh, one about upcoming sequels. Maybe that's one uh, that we can do here in the future. Look at us just like, you know, gathering material. Gathering ideas for future shows. Yes, because we're in it for it. We're in it to win it. I love that show, Minute to Win It. You ever seen that? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely love that show. Um, Guy Fieri hosted it, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then it was that figure skater dude. Right. But just not Brian Bortano. <laughs> no, not that one. <laughs> I want to. Maybe it was just Wait, Weir. Oh, I don't know. Was was it figure skater or skier? You know what? Let me consult my fact checking database. Okay. Uh, meaning Google. Yeah, Go Google who who replaced Guy Fieri for it. Yeah, that's what I want to know. That's uh, yeah. Uh huh. I know that guy was on there. Uh huh. Uh huh. He's taking us all. Oh, Johnny Weir is what James so, says. No, it's not Johnny Weir. I know I kept saying Justin Weir, but I, it's not Johnny Weir. Okay. Um, it was actually Apollo Anton. Oh no. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Listen, I don't keep track of figure skaters. Do I look like a guy that keeps track of figure skaters? No. I know that one know. Chinese chick. That's about it. But we also don't look like guys who listen to musicals and watch those, but that's what we do. But I'll tell you this yeah. much. I'll You're tell you this much. Side. I'll tell you this much. I can't tell you a single figure skater outside of Brian Boitano, and I only know him because of South Park. Uh, Yeah, that's true. And also... Oh, and like Michelle Kwan. Is that the one who you were talking about, Michelle Kwan? No, it's... um. I want to say it's like Christina Yamaguchi or something like that. Oh, that name sounds familiar. Yep, that's about it. Okay. That's, that's about it. People are like, God, Max, oh, how dare you? It's fine. It's it's fine. I know nothing about figure skating. Yep. Nothing. I, I, I own it. I right. own it. It's one of those things where you're like, I watched I, Tanya. I didn't know that it was about figure skating. Oh, yeah, her! <laughs> I know a figure skater. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, movies. I only, 
I only no, I only know of her because of there was a TV series, and I think it was on like Spike TV or something like that, where it was like World's Dumbest, right? And she was a commentator on it, and yeah. I loved her. That's the only reason. I yeah, know, yeah, I remember the... the show that you're talking about. Yeah, she was one of the, as they called them, the talking heads for the shows. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it was pretty good. Okay, so uh, tune in next week for uh, trivia shenanigans. Yeah, and um, Watch we'll us do see how that different. goes. Um, please, different. please, please like us on Facebook. Uh, share, you know, the invite link with your friends. Get more people. Also Watch on YouTube. Show. Don't forget and, yeah, about YouTube. Also, also to like and share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Yeah, and and you know, show other people. Yeah, get more people interested in it. And if we're boring and you don't like us, let us know. Message. Tell us what we can yeah. do to work on it. Let us know. Yeah, give me some ideas. Like, we're just like going by the seat of our pants. Like, we literally sit down Monday afternoons at lunch and go, hey, so what do you want to talk about two days from now? Right, right. Hey, I, I, I have this possible kernel of idea. And maybe we can work with it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what we, do you want to hear that would make us less boring? Right. right. I would love input from anybody. Just, hey, this would be a fun show to try out. All right, let's give it a go. Yeah. I mean, that's so kind like, of how, follow, subscribe. That, that, that's literally how our Amen. trivia show is coming next week. It's hey, let's try something different than just two guys talking about movies. Get some different content and get get more people involved. Get other guests involved, and you know, fans of the show that you know wouldn't mind coming on and just talking with us and having fun. Yeah, it's gonna be a blast, and you're gonna wish you were here afterwards. So you just might as well be here. Right. So I will catch everybody next week. Have a good one. Bye. Later, y'all. Let's see if I can do this right. Bye, <laughs> right, guys. Bye.